Jai Shri Ram. Thank you very much, Sudarshan Das Ji. Sita Ram. Namaste. Sat Sri Kaal. Jai Guru Datta. Om Sai Ram. Kem Cho. Buenos dias. Such a pleasure. Buenos dias. Such a pleasure to be with you in Satsang this evening. And uh, Dave, thank you for that extremely long introduction. Not required. Uh, one of the, uh, just an addition uh, to that list of accomplished musicians is the great Sudarshan Das Ji, who is seated by the stage. Give him a lovely round of applause, my brother, who I have been associated with for many, many years. Tremendous, tremendous singer, accomplished musician, and also spiritualist. This evening, I'm going to ask all of you to take a deep breath wherever you see. Sit comfortably. They told me we can go until tomorrow morning, so I hope you guys are okay with that. For the next few minutes, let us take a spiritual bath. As requested this evening, the Holy Scriptures of Sri Ramchandramanas, composed and written by Kavi Samra. Sahitya Chakravarti Goswami Tulsidas Ji. And our focus this evening is none other by request of the birthday girl herself on Hanuman Baba. As we begin, gently close your eyes wherever you are seated. Let all thoughts prior coming to Satsang this evening be relinquished on your mind. Take a deep, relaxing breath. Drop your shoulders, you can hold your breath for a count of four, five, six, then let it go. Take another deep, refreshing breath. Fill the lungs, the capacity. Again, release the tension from the shoulders. Exhale slowly, relax. Once more, take another deep breath. Let it flow through all the veins, all the capillaries, the tiniest blood vessels in this body. Remove all of the negative, all of the carbon monoxide, dioxide, whatever is in there. And exhale. Relax. Into the center of your mind is now, center of the forehead. Instill that image of Bhagavan Sri Ganesha. Pratama Pujya Vinayaka, the removal of all obstacles, Om Dham Narapatale Namo. Shiva, Bhagavan, 
as he looks down upon us with his hands in the higher mudra position, giving us his darshan, giving us his blessings. We call upon him. I humbly ask of you, as we proceed with our session of devotion this evening, I know cell phones have beautiful ringtones. If you don't mind putting them on silence, we'll appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Swami Tulsidasi writes the very first shloka of Sri Ramchandra Manas, a beautiful prayer called Mangal Ashtar. Glorifying whom? Ganapati Bhagavan, Bhagavan Shiva Shankar, the sage Valmiki, and of course Mother Mani, the goddess of speech, upon whom we pray tonight so that she will sit on our tongues as we sing, as we glorify, as we chant from the Holy Scriptures. Mother Ashtaka, was Swami to Siddhartha. Sita Ram Gunagra 
And this is how we call upon or summon that Lord. I didn't realize we were broadcasting internationally as well. Ah, you'll figure it out. There we go. From the feet of Lord Ganesha, in the order prescribed by our scriptures, we then return to our Guru. Today, prior to coming to Shiv Shakti Mandir, I wasn't aware who your Pandaji was. It so happens that he's my dear brother. His brother, the late Pandit Acharya Ji, is a very dear, dear, I mean very dear brother of mine as well. Pandaji, I am humbled today to be in your ashram and to sit amongst your devotees in Satsang. Hey, Bhagavan, could you give him a lovely round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Our scriptures teaches us Guru the Brahma, Guru the Vishnu. What's the rest? Jai Guru Yes. This next bhajan. As we glorify the Gurus, wherever your Gurus are, they have gone to the beyond. My Guru has gone to the beyond. The late Pandit Ram Prasad Tiwari, those of you from Devi will know him very well, Dharvi Baba. But we have adopted sub Gurus. It says, Mother, Father, friendship, this bond of the Guru is for life. Incidentally, our parents, Madhuru Deva Bhava, Pitturu Deva Bhava, Atiti Deva Bhava, our mothers are the first Gurus and of course fathers. My parents, I think, are live listening down in Trinidad. If you are, I say to you, pronounce and I bow to you, to speak. It says, you always reside in my heart. You are my devotion, my power, my salvation. You are my Shiva. Let us sing this beautiful version and sing it. Guru Matru Pita, Guru Bandhu Sakha, Tere Charnu Me Sai, Mere Koti Pranam. Guru Matru Pita, Guru Bandhu Sakha, Guru Matru Pita, Guru Bandhu Sakha, Tere Charnu Me Sai. Yeah. 
today being Saturday, Shanibar, is one particular deity that we always give special reverence to on a Saturday. Who's that deity? Haruman Baba. Haruman Ji. Our deity this evening has requested us to go into the Ramayana and extract beautiful kathas or katha glorifying Hanumanji. Hanumanji is my Ishveta. And I can give you hundreds of examples of his miraculous real life work on a daily basis. My day begins with three things. Kalagare Vasate Lakshmi Karmadiye Sarasati Kalmule Purgovindam. Firstly, then bow to Dharti Mahatan. Then, Sri Hanuman Chalisa. This, these 40 verses, composed by whom? Who wrote the Hanuman Chalisa? Paneshra Bhagavad Parasa, come on. <laughs> Kavi Samrat Sahit Chakravarti Goswami Tulsidas Ji. And how do we write? How do we create these 40 verses? One writer says, when he would wake up in the morning to go to his ashram, he would have to climb 40 stairs. And every time he climbed one stair, Jai Hanuman, Gyan, Gun Sagar, Jai Kapi, Sitting Loka, and so he went on. Devotees, this, these 40 verses were given to us. And did you have a volunteer? I have a gift for everybody here tonight. Yes. Please send someone up. A couple of the kids even. I think we have just, just about enough. Come on up. Make sure everybody gets a copy. And this is not for decorating your own puja room, okay? We're going to sing from it tonight. It's in English and Hindi. Go ahead. Take as many as you like. Give it out to everybody in the audience. Now you must make sure these children get extra person. God bless you all. Take it. Come on, Bitter. Take all the way in the back. Come on. When the Mughals invaded India many, many years ago, centuries ago, Goswami Tulsidas Ji was walking around, you know, in New Delhi. And he was chanting, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram. And some of the security guards, the soldiers heard him and said, hey, come here, what are you, what are you chanting? Who's this arm? He said, that's my God. He says, no, no, no. So they reported him to the Mughal king. And the Mughal king says, said to him, when he went to the court, if your God is greater than mine, then show me a miracle right now. He says, Jai Shri Ram, and that's what I know. So the king threw him in prison. And devotees, one writer says he began composing Shri Hanuman Chalisa. And before he was finished with the 40th verse, thousands of banners, thousands of monkeys came and were able to pick that lock and open that jail cell and free him. Then and only then, that Mughal king says, Your God is truly greater than mine. Prince of all power to the Hanuman I want you to feel the energy. And sing to the top of your voices. You all have copies in your hands. Come on. If you know of anyone tonight who is sick and suffering, many I know personally are perhaps in hospice or in the ICU on their last breath. Some may have passed this week as well. If anybody here is suffering from any sort of pain, sicknesses, illnesses, channel this positive vibrations now to those individuals as we pray. Shri Guru Chayana Sarva Jiraju Bhirapur Nijmana Mukura Sudha Barna Mukura Bhubara Bhimala Jasu Jodhaya Bhubhari Chahar Buddhi Na Tanu Chanake Sumiro
last. He was never about fame, fortune, pomp, and pageantry. Anything that glittered and glamoured, he was not interested. Because in his heart, the only thing that was important was what? Ram. Ram. That is all. And devotees, when we are able to take everything out, including the nine negative qualities, which we all have, calm, approach, hello, bahanka, hate, hunger, hypocrisy, deceit, jealousy, malice, dishonesty, and put those aside. And the only thing that should remain in our heart is Ram. Tonight we'll examine this name Ram, and we'll learn a little bit more about the power of Ram. But before we do so, let me say Swagatam, and greetings on behalf of our dear wonderful Didi, Samdeji, whose birthday we are blessed to celebrate with Satsang. So Swami Tulsidashi tells us in Ramayana, Satya Samagam Harikatha, to receive Durla Vadoi, Sut Dara or Lakshmi Pati Ke Vihoi. The only reason we are in Satsang tonight is not because of the invitation we receive. By the way, it's a very nice invitation. <laughs> it is because of our past good deeds or karma. We must have done something good to earn the right or to earn the blessing to sit amongst these beautiful mutis in this ashram this evening. Brothers and sisters, we join tonight in this satsang and then mantle. Unless, uh, I'm not sure if you all know that there's a mantle right after. This is why we said we're going into the wee hours of the morning. In this beautiful Shiv Shakti Mandir here in Orlando, and Pandiji, I bow to your reverence. Thank you for hosting us this evening to other pundits in the audience, members of this beautiful Mandir Shiv Shakti. Our virtual audience, many of you joining us all over the world this evening, Swamis. The Kirtan group, the musicians, elders, children, I say Swagatam, welcome to all of you. Blessed are we to be amongst each other in this collaborative birthday satsang. Tonight, in order of us to gain a deep understanding on the benefits of Ram now, the name of Ram, let us dive into the holy scriptures of Sri Ram Charitamanas, Goswami Tulsi Rama in Sumina. Another prayer glorifying Gananayaka Kari Varabhadan. Who is Gananayaka? Lord Ganesh. Again, Mother Saraswati. Who is Swami Tulsi Das Jirai? Sister Sita. Jo Sumirat Siddho Gananayaka Kari Varabhadan. Oh, 
Created that lingam on the shores of Rameshwaram and the symbol, symbol is not the entire Ramayana and what each character indeed means in Ramayana. The Ram. Ram 
representing the fire God always burns away all sins. Ah, representing the sun God, it dispels darkness. And Ma, representing the moon God, it cools one's temper and produces tranquility. So one may ask the question, Baba, if you're in traffic, boy, you have a lot of traffic here in Orlando. My goodness, I thought Miami was bad. So when you're stuck in traffic, what do you do? We blame the politicians first. That's so. We complain, but who listens? You can complain all you want. You ain't going anywhere. The traffic will go as fast as it is destined. However, have you ever tried chanting the name Ram while stuck in traffic? Ram Ram Bhaj Ram Ram Bhaj Ram Ram Bhaj Ram 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 Bhaj Ram Ram Devotees, that name Ram, so powerful. And where does Rama live? What do we call that city as he lives? Where is he from? Ayodhya. And what is the meaning of Ayodhya? Hmm? Trouble free. Close. Yes, trouble free. Close. Anybody else? Ayodhya. The place where there will never be a war. In other words, no harbor as they say in Trinidad. No nonsense. The name Ram means peace, calmness, one that is beautiful, one that is sweet. What is the meaning of Ram? I'll let you fill in the blanks. Rama is a beautiful poem, I quote. Sweeter than sugar, tastier than the cream from the curds, growing in sweetness like honey, as the name is chanted. Verily, it is nectar itself. Meditate all ye on the sacred name of Rama, O embodiments of love. The poet, poet continues to say, Rama is the friend of the universe. He is the protector. He is the patron saint. And to comprehend the nature of such a unique and ideal personality is not quite easy. It is easier to count the waves in the ocean than to describe the qualities and the glories of Lord Rama. Rama Chandra is indweller in all beings. So tonight, devotees, how about we have a Murthy of Rama? He's here. Ah, there he is. I want you all to raise your right hand like this and reach out to Lord Rama like this. Bring him now like this and place him in here and say, Ram, Lord Ram, remain here in my heart. Rama is in my heart. I want you all you smiling now, you see? It's easily. You just bring Ram and put him there and there he is straight down. One of my gurus taught me this. He says, Ramayan, you can look at the Ramayan as www.srd. No, that's not a website. No one looking for it on Google, okay? www.srd. When you're looking for the answer to any question, be it politics, family, life in general, employment, friendship, community, mandir, www.srd. W, what? W, in the world. W, would. WWW, what in the world would SRD, Sri Ram do? What in the world would Sri Ram do? The answer is in Sri Ram Chattamas. Guarantee. Brothers and sisters, when Hanumanji was returning from Lanka, Jay Sri Ram is flying like a 747, even faster coming across the ocean. All the vanas they stood and they look, what is this thing coming across, you know? And you, you know what sonic boom is? You ever heard it of a sonic boom and an airplane is flying high up? You hear that loud roar on, on, on the ground? That is what was happening on the shores of Rameshwaram. Hanumanji was coming. And as he was coming, the Vanas began to dance because, you know, good news is coming. When Hanumanji is, is present, 
know that Lord Rama is there. Tonight he is very present with us. And as he was coming across the, the sky now, all the banners began to sing and dance like we are about to sing. And please feel free to dance. We celebrate in a birthday tonight. Too, right? <laughs> needs to be built. I want to paint this picture to you. Have anybody been to Rameshwaram in, in, uh, in South India? No? Yes, Pandiji? Pandiji? In Rameshwaram, there's a place called Dharushkoli, which is shaped like a sword like this. And that is where Ramasetu, that bridge that goes across Sri Lanka, begins. Many people will say, Baba, that was a myth. The bridge is not there. The bridge is there. It's underwater, I've seen it with my own eyes. The rocks still float. And we'll go into that tonight in Qatar. This side now of Cape Comoro, when you look across, you can't see any land on the other side. The bridge has to be built now, constructed. All of the banners, Lord Rama, Neil and Nal, the engineers, Jamun, the general, they all assemble on this shore of Cape Comoro. And deciding now, how are we going to construct this bridge over this ocean? Devotees Goswami Tulsidashi now tells us in this opening Doha tonight as we sing. Principle of the Yama Prosha from the Vaham and Vaham and Tanya Ki. Remember from Kathas, these two 
now engineers, Neil and Nal. They were playing by the side of a river. And the sadhus, you know, they placed their shaligrams and they went to take a bath in the river. And what they would do, these fellows, they would take little boys, you know, take the shaligrams and throw them into the river. So they were given a shock, a curse, that anything that they would throw into water would float. And this is why the rocks still float today, even in Ramishwaram. Rama, upon getting word now that the bridge needs to be constructed, he called all his ministers together. And he directed them now to construct this bridge across the ocean. Harumanji said, Lord, your name is the bridge that can safely transport man across this ocean of life. So here we are building a physical bridge. But our Katha tells us, if we look a little bit deeper now, the name Ram, Rama, that we just described, is that bridge that we can use to move out of this mortal world and go back to where we have all come from, into Vaikuntalok. Harumanji says, Lord, which bridge can be stronger and safer than that? It was Harumanji who located Mother Sita, remember? And he did not quit until the mission was complete. He never faltered nor questioned his assigned task. Jai Sri Ram. To the children in the audience tonight, how many of you, when mommy or daddy or even one of your siblings, brothers, sisters, elder, gives you an instruction or asks you to do something, you question whether it's uh, the PlayStation or the Xbox or some TV program has more importance, or not today, maybe tomorrow. Hanumanji is teaching us tonight, never question the word or the instruction of the Lord. Your parents, especially your mother, mother, mother comes first, see that's true. Mother comes first, father is a Shakti, father and guru. My dear brothers and sisters, Hanumanji succeeded in coordinating his words, his thoughts and his actions. We say in Katha, Mangram Vachan say Ekhi Hai. When our words and our thoughts and our actions are in sync, we are following the teachings of Sanatan Dharma. But in this world today, in this mundane planet we live on, one may think something, say something totally different, and do something absolutely different from the rest. That is a totally confused individual. He had, Armanji, had the unique distinction of being great in physical strength, mental stability, Virtuous character. Ashta Siddhi Nabadi Ke Data Asavadina Janaki Mata. We just sang this. Eight Siddhis and nine Siddhis were given to him. Anyone in uh, in college, in the audience there? Anyone doing a, uh, pursuing a college degree? No? Any, I'm sure. Okay. Some of you, some of us have pursued college degrees. The average takes how much? Four years if you're lucky. Harumanji mastered the 52 branches of Satya Sanatan Dharma until four years, you know. In 60 hours. 60 hours. All avenues of dharma. And who was his guru? Come on, Phanix Bhagavad Who was his guru? Surya Narayan. Now, if you look at the image of Surya Narayan, Surya Narayan is traveling, right? Even though we say the sun is fixed. Surya Narayan is traveling. When Hanumanji approached Surya Narayan, he says, Guruji, Diksha Karuna, give me, give, me, give me knowledge. I'm, I'm appealing to you. So the Anaya says, I'm traveling all over at a great speed. I wouldn't have time to stop to educate you. What did Hanumanji do? He bowed to him. He says, I will fly reverse. I will fly backwards and look up at you. And if you notice some of the, the, the pictures, you will see Hanumanji in this position, taking that knowledge from his guru. Brothers and sisters, he knew the four Vedas and the six Shastras to a T. The Gita says that a scholar is one who sees the name of divine, of the divine force, motivating everyone. A scholar is one who sees the name of the divine force motivating everyone. There are in the world today millions of people who will recite the name of Lord, Ram, Krishna, Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, whatever the case may be. But while reciting the name, they do not realize the greatness of the glory of that divine name. Today in Kalyu, there are a number of people who will chant Lord Rama's name. Just recently, Sri Ram Janma Bhumi, I just came from there as a matter of fact last month, in Ayodhya, 
beautiful, beautiful ashram. Thousands of people, if not millions of people, have already gone just to get a glimpse of this, this holy spot. Nam Japa, changing the name is not enough. Why? Whatever name you recite, you must also be active in the service of the form of that name. What is implied by the term? Ramakarya, service to Lord Rama. What we are doing here this evening? Service to Lord Rama. See, God and every living creature, Goswami Tulsidas, he tells us in the scriptures. Rama is eminent in the entire cosmos. Rama is present everywhere. Hence, we have to take part in these social services. And by rendering service to one's fellow being, rendering help to the helpless, and performing sacred acts, dedicated service, one can only become illegible. For Sri Ram's grace. My dear brothers and sisters, although Harmanji was highly intelligent in matters relating to the divine, he made no distinction between good or bad. He carried out implicitly whatever he was ordered to do. He did not care to inquire whether it was right or wrong. Why? Because he regarded whatever Ram said as Ved Vakya, gospel truth. God's word is beyond question, make no mistake. Hanumanji felt that he was not competent to sit and in judgment to the Lord's word. How many of us sit in judgment when we gather? When we gather for social events, we gather at a friend's home, even we gather at satsangs afterwards, having a meal, we judge. Let us take Hanumanji's teaching tonight. Do not judge. We are not equipped to judge. He says, my duty, Hanumanji, my duty is to carry out whatever Rama says. Kartavyam yogam uchate. Duty is yoga, he says. The Gita tells us this. And what is yoga? Yoga karmasu kaushalam. Yoga is excellence in the performance of duty. Brothers and sisters, we should embark on all actions in accordance with the divine command. Then alone we can express or experience all kinds of knowledge. Hanuman was always engaged in the contemplation of Ram. Ram, Ram, Ram. Ram was his breath. Every action was Ram. Every hair on his body chanted the name of Ram. You all notice this from scriptures as well. Mother Sita was asking him one day in the kitchen, you know, she was preparing a meal for her Lord. And she asked him, you know, why are you so in, in trance? Why are you so engrossed in Ram? And Hanumanji says, Ma, he plucked one of the hairs from his body and he says, Let's put it by her ears and listen. And what was she hearing? Ram, Ram, Ram. Every, every atom of his body was encased in Ram. Hanumanji was adored by devotees as an example of total devotion to God. When some had doubts, whether Hanumanji could leap across the ocean in search of Mother Sita in Lanka, Hanumanji told them, you know, Rama had given him the task and he would also give him the strength to accomplish it. You see, devotees, when you place implicit faith, when you place implicit faith in your Lord, know that you can accomplish any task. Jai Shri Ram. And this was the rocket fuel. This was the genesis. This was the, the energy that drove Hanuman to great success. That's the name, Jai Shri Ram. I'm not sure if you do this today, but before, when you open your car door, when you sit in your car, before you turn that ignition on, call the name of God. Jai Shri Ram, Om Namah Shivaya. And when you reach your destination, thank Him again. He will always be successful and He will always be safe. This absolute faith was the cause of Hanumanji's success. And when you see people entertain doubt as to their capacity to carry out tasks assigned to them by the divine, they will be weak and powerless. As spiritualists, my brother Sudarshan will tell you as well, when you take this path, Pandiji is here as well, when you take this path, you get all the rocks, just like the rocks that we used to build that bridge, thrown at you. But you see, when you have that faith, when you have that firmness, and when you place unconditional love and unconditional Faith in your God, nothing else matters. You become like a Teflon pan, it just flows away. 
Ya Yishtaya. Brothers and sisters, to accomplish anything in this life, faith, firm faith is essential. Firm faith is essential. Doubts have to be expelled. Everything that happens should be accepted as though it is for your own good, because God knows best. And that is the means to qualify for the grace of God. You know, it is easy to please Hanumanji. I'll come back to Didi now. Sindur, it is said, is everything to him. Sing his praises with love. Your hearts will have the utmost faith in the son of Anjanima. And offering praises to him will indeed you will reap the blessings. There is no other form of God like Hanumanji. He is the most worshipped Lord in the entire world. In every home, in every temple, in every heart, he is loved and he is respected. Let us glorify him as we sing this beautiful legend, as he offers his utmost devotion and service to Sri Ram. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chanting the name Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram as they pass them down onto the shore for this building of this bridge. Off and on they uprooted huge trees and passed them onwards. The bridge now is starting to take shape. Goswami Tulsidas Shri Ram, Dekhi Sevdu Ati Sundar Rachana, it became a beautiful sight to see this. And Neil and Nal, the two engineers now, they were casting the materials into the water. But as they were placing them into the water, without food, without rest, they worked 24-7, 365. Not like some of the construction workers here in the U.S. And the devotees, the bridge was taking shape. But as they placed the rocks and the trees, even though the rocks are floating, they were moving away. The waves were pushing them apart. And what was the mystical formula here to bring those rocks together? Not Elmer's, not uh, Crazy Glue. The glue was Rahama. Rama, and the minute Rama, was, the name was inscribed on those rocks, they grew, they stuck together, it stuck, it is still stuck together today. That is the strength of the name of Rama. They built a bridge, the length of 14 years, or 202 kilometers, in one day. Refreshed by a good night's sleep now, they rose in dawn the next day, and they continued. Brahma Muharad, what is Brahma Muharad? We all get up at Brahma Muharad, right? 4 a.m. in the morning? Yes. And resumed work at that time. And always victory to Sri Ram. Jai Sri Ram. Jai Sri Ram. Jai Sri Ram. And as they continue now to pile 
the materials for this bridge building. The second day, the bridge was extended for another 288 kilometers, 20 yojanas. The next day, 21 more yojanas. The fourth day, 22 yojanas. And on the fifth day, listen carefully now, on the fifth day, 23 yojanas. How many days did it take to build the bridge? Five. Isn't five significant to Hanumanji as well? Yes? So you see the auspiciousness here. It is another, not only Panch Mukhi, but five days to build this bridge to, Yang, to, to uh, Lanka. 100 yojanas, a total of 1,440 kilometers. This bridge was constructed in five days. Now, during the construction of this bridge, when they were bringing mountains from all the way up north India, when word got it that the bridge was complete, to stop, no more material is required, required. The message was passed back up. In those days, there were no cell phones, there were no text messages, no what they couldn't WhatsApp each other and say, boy, stop. No, the words mouth by word of mouth. And word got all the way up to a place called Govardhan. And one mountain was already on the back of one of the banners coming down the road. And then the message came, stop. And that mountain became very sad. And the message went back now down to where Sri Ram was. All around, one particular mountain is quite sad. That he was unable to participate in building of this bridge. What did Lord Rama do? Lord Rama said, sent the message back. He says, don't worry. You stay right there. In my next avatar, you will have a very auspicious role to play. What was the name of that mountain? Govardhan. And who was the avatar to come? Bhagavan Shri Krishna. So you see, Ramayana plays very importantly now into this next step. Brothers and sisters, when the message went back to Govardhan, he wasn't angry. You know what he says? Oh,
said now, Lord Ram is speaking. He says, as the bridge is being completed, look at this most auspicious and beautiful spot. The spot that he's speaking of is Rameshwaram. His glory, its glory, he says, is immeasurable. And it cannot be described in words. Devotees, when we speak of Lord Rama and his glories, we sing these two lines. where the bridge was being constructed, a squirrel by the name of Raju. Is anybody in the audience named Raju? Raju <laughs> Baba. <laughs> Jai Shri Ram. So in this instance, he's a squirrel. And he was an astute devotee of Lord Rama. How big is a squirrel? Not Baba, eh? How big is a squirrel? Here in Florida, they are about, about nine or ten inches, right? So all these... Banners. The, the, the English translation says monkeys. I don't like that word monkey. Monkeys are nice. But when we speak of Hanumanji and we speak about the celestial beings, they are known as banners. When you, when you say to the, someone in the English or the, the Western world, the word monkey, they think of somebody chanchal, foolish. Hanumanji was neither. And neither were the banners. So the banners now, huge fellows, they are carrying all these rocks and all these mountains and trees and building this bridge. Little Raju, with his fur, would go into the ocean, soak himself, roll up in the sun, and then make his way now, you know, dangling through all of these big fellows, and go on the bridge and then shake himself off. What was he doing? He was dropping sand on the bridge. How much sand can a, a little tennis squirrel carry on the bridge? Maybe this much? This bridge is 800 yojanas long. So, some of the banners now, they complain to Hanuman, hey, Hanumanji. Speak to the fellow, you know, he'll get crushed because we are carrying all of these heavy, you know, mountains and trees, and he's coming with a little bit of sand and wiggling his way around, and he'll, he'll get crushed. Hanumanji said, Okay, I'll deal with him. Hanumanji went now and he took his toe, the right toe, and he placed it on the tail of Raju. And what will happen? Hanumanji is a big fellow. Raju says, Ouch, what are you doing? Hanumanji says, Raju, you're going to get hurt. Please desist from what you are doing, your activities. And I will stop building the bridge. Stop bringing that sand and playing around here. Raju felt hurt now, so he went to complain to Sri Ram. says, Lord, I am here trying to help build this bridge. And your general, Hanumanji, he came and he put his toe and he, he, he pressed on my tail and I'm in pain now. Lord Rama smiled. He says, Raju, go ahead, you continue building the bridge. That's okay, my son. Then Lord Rama summoned Hanumanji. He says, Hanumanji, is it true? What did you? He says, yes, my lord. He is going to create problems. He will get hurt. So we are trying to prevent him from getting hurt. So then, Lord Rama says, Arumanji, let me teach you a lesson today. So he took his toe now, Lord Rama's toe, and he pressed it on Arumanji's tail. What do you think Arumanji did? Huh? He smiled. Who wouldn't want the lord to press on their tail with his toe? Because he's any opportunity that Hanumanji had to be in the company or even get a touch from his Lord. That was heaven friend. That was golden. Nevertheless, 
the Lord spoke to Hanumanji in these words. He says, Hanumanji, it's not the quantity. Patra Pushpam Balam Toyam is in Gita. Not the quantity. But you see the love that the little squirrel has for me? Please allow him to continue. Because that, sometimes we just, we just said in Kata, people, we chant the name Ram, we chant the name Krishna, oh, day and night. We are Bhaktin and Bhaktas. But where is the love? Where is the devotion? Are you ready to submit, Lord? All that I have is yours. Are you ready? Many times, you know, we do, we go to uh, funeral satsangs, wake Katas and so on. We ask the question, simple question. Someone close to you has passed away. Are you, how many of you, are you ready to die? Are you prepared to die? Oh my God, that is a very difficult question. It's a scary question sometimes, isn't it? Something to think about. We're not here to talk about that tonight, but I'm just drawing a reference. We continue with the Katano. So Raju continued to build his bridge, and he was actually a hero in the Kutubasi Ramayana. Jai Shri Ram. On the fifth day, Rama sat on the Sishana and was delighted with what he was seeing. So Swami Tulsi Das writes in this next job, let us see what he says. Because Ravan was an astute scholar. He was a master musician. And he was very versed in the Vedas. But yet, he was a pretty naughty fellow. He had intense attachment to what that specific form of Godhead. 
and Bhagwan, uh, sorry, uh, Vishanji, he says, even though he's an astute worshipper of Lord Shiva, he will certainly meet his death at your hands, O Lord. And to commemorate now his devotion to Lord Shiva, I pray to you, O Lord, that on the eve of moving on this bridge to Lanka, for you to install a Shivlingam. A Shivlingam here, so that for centuries to come, when people would come on this path to enter Lanka, they can worship Lord Shiva. Today, that Lingam sits in Rameshwaram, one of the 12 Jyoti Lingams. They would also be, he says, they would also be fortunate to have such an experience. The Lingam would be extolled by them as an idol installed by Lord Rama. How many of you celebrated uh, Mahashivratri last week, last Friday? Yes, we all pay obeisances to the Lingam. He says, even when this bridge is eroded and crumbled by time, which it has, it is now submerged, most of it, the spot could be identified by future generations by means of this Lingam. Now, Lord, sorry, Vishan is giving, not giving instruction, but he's praying to Lord Rama to install this Lingam. Many years ago, a devotee approached me, I was at the funeral, conducting a funeral, and approached me, just out of the blue, Baba, can I speak to you for a second? He said, yes, Didi, sure. Pulled me aside, you know. He said, Baba, I have a question for you. A great person once told me that I should not worship Lord Shiva. I said, okay, tell me more. He said, yes, I'm not, because of my planet or patra or something, I should not worship Lord Shiva. Have you ever heard this? Have you ever heard this? <laughs> so let's examine this statement carefully now. If, you, if she's not supposed to worship Lord Shiva, who is his wife? Who is his consort? Jagadam Bhima and all his sisters. Who is his son? One of them. Lord Ganesha. Kartike. Right? So that rules out Jagadam Bhima, Kartike and Lord Ganesha. Who else is left? Who is his 11th incarnation? Right. So you see how you have to examine these statements carefully? Do not worship Lord Shiva. No, no, no. Let us see what Lord Rama tells us here in Katha. He says, Goswami to Sri Rashi Rai, he says, Shiva Drohi Mama Bharat Kahava Sonar Sapne Hu Mohi Na Pava And then Lord Rama responds, he says, Shankar Gavi Mokha Bhagat Yachamodi Sonar Kimo Rahamati Tori Shri Rama Jai Rama The words of Lord Rama He says Those who worship me and have not even an iota of love for Bhagwan Shiva. You're wasting your time. You will never see my face. Katha. Ram Charitamanas tells us this. So when instructions come from sometimes from people of high authority saying, you shouldn't worship Lord Shiva, bring them back to Rama. It's right here in Black and White, Goswami Tulsi in the words of Lord Rama. Devotees, Lord Rama then spoke to Vivish and he says, I will fulfill your wish. You are the future ruler of Lanka. You are going to be the king of Lanka when Rama is defeated. And in order to please you, I am ready to carry out your wishes, whatever is involved. So Green then directed the Vahanas to gather now all the requisites, all the puja ingredients and so forth for this installation. And he procured a very sacred, impressive lingam. And he sent Hanumanji himself to bring that lingam for the consecration. Rama performed the ceremonial ablution of this lingam with water from the sea and he invoked vitality and grace into this lingam. The Vanas then began to sang, sing hymns and they ecstatically shouted from the heavens, Hooray, hooray, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram! And Lakshman and Sugriv helped Rama now to plant and to place this lingam into position. Then Lord, Lord Rama now spoke these beautiful words in Doha. Let's see what he says. Yeah. 
Because every word, thought and deed was encased with the name Ram. So too, he had only two desires. We covered one, to be there and to be near to Lord Rama. He yearned always to be near to Rama. He had no use for any objects. Remember the pearl necklace that Mother Sita gifted to him? That was of no value because it didn't have Rama in it. And Rama praised Hanumanji as the greatest of all devotees and embraced him. Rama declared, Hanuman, no material object is fit to be given to you as a present. You live in the world of the spirits. You have no attachment to anything or anyone in this world. May you be present wherever my glories are being sung. I repeat, may you be present wherever my glories are being sung. Which glories are we singing all night? So Hanumanji is definitely here with us tonight. Brothers and sisters, he was all humility in the presence of Lord Rama. And he was utterly fearless before Raman. He, he went toe to toe with Raman. Some other time we'll go into that katha. And before a Rakshas, he was a hero. Hanumanji knew how to conduct himself in any situation. And he was supremely intelligent. He stands out for all of mankind. And this entire Ramayana, in summary tonight, Rama's brothers, comrades, companions, collaborators, and all examples of people who live dharmic lives. Dasharat is the representation of this physical body with the ten senses, Dasharat. The three qualities of gunas, or serenity, passion, and sloth, sattva, rajas, and tamas, are represented by the three queens. And the four goals of life, the purushantras, dharma, right conduct, artha, wealth, karma, desires, Moksha, liberation, are represented by the four sons, Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Satruan. Lakshman is the intellect, Sugriva is discrimination, Viveka, and Bali is despair. Hanuman is the embodiment of courage, and the bridge that we built tonight over that ocean is the old bridge over the ocean of delusion. The three demons, Rakshas chief, Ravan, Kumbhakaran, and Vivishan, are personifications of the three passionate, thoughtful, and Sri Rajasik, Tamasik, and Sattva qualities. Sitama is the awareness of the universal, absolute, Brahmajnana, which the individual must acquire and regain while undergoing this travels in this crucible of life. Make our hearts pure and strong, contemplating on the glories of the grandeur of the Ramayana, and be established in the faith that Sri Ram is the reality of our existence. Sri Ram is the reality of our existence. Jai Sri Ram. Did he have a good on time? I think we are okay. Yes? Sorry. Right. So before we moved, before we move to the medical part of the program, I will ask you to join me for two item. One, glorif glorification of Bhagavan Sri Ram. And then we'll do what's called Katha Visarjan. After, uh, after uh, Ramayan, it is customary that we sing Visarjan and glorify the name of God. As a matter of fact, we'll do Visarjan first and then we'll go right into the <laughs> Let us blend our voices. Dolak and Tabla, all musicians.
began to shed tears, you know, to cry. And they were yearning for Kanha, Gopal, Ghansham. Mahana Ravi puts beautiful lyrics into this as we say tonight. Join me. Oh, 
you clean hey come on i want you to give the musicians encourage our musicians beautiful indeed the great poet kabir das these again all bhajans and, and uh, geets were requested by our birthday didi kabir das he says in this next bhajan when i was born I cry and the world laughs. My deeds are such that when I die, I will laugh and the world will cry. So true. This body is a delicate, transparent sheet, drenched and woven in the extra of Lord Rama's name. And the spinning wheel is made from eight lotuses, the eight chakras of this body. And the cotton is spun from the five elements of the earth. It takes nine to ten months to weave it completely. And the ignorant and foolish have stained it and made it unclean. This beautiful bhajan. Again, we sing Thank you. 
celebrate this beautiful occasion of his birthday. This song, one of my favorites actually, it says, one day you'll be sold for the price of clay. At this you will be left the world with your words. So give your songs to the lips of others and leave a mark of them when you depart from this world one day. Misfortune may place many obstacles in your way, but fortune will unite you with your lost friends. This, the lyrics, the voice of the late Mukesh Chandramadu. I believe mean, this movie is called Miranam Joka. Another Joka. Ek din bichhari ka manti ke ho Jagme rahi jani ke Oh, 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 oh,
He was now home. Give Sri a lovely round of applause now. Well done. Always a pleasure. This next song, again, we're going to Bollywood again. What happened to your promise? Kya hua tera wada? What happened to your vow and your intention? The day my heart forgets you, that will be the last day of my life. Real lyrics, you know. <laughs> that day my heart forgets you, that will be the last day of my life. I remember that I told you, you would never ever get upset with me. Let's put this, put this, uh, this, this song in practice. Right, right. Eh? Okay. Kya hua? Oh, 
26 song. Are we good on time? Yes. It's early. I have to try back to four dollar deal, right? About two years ago, we lost also the Nightingale. I consider it Nightingale period. But Marshi, but Abhushan, Lata Mangeshkar, the Saraswati of this day and age. One of the songs that really resonates with us, and I'm sure Didi selected this, it says, Embrace me. We don't know whether this beautiful night will ever be there again or not. We don't know whether in this life we meet again or not. We have got these moments with such luck. Take a good close look at me. We don't know whether it's in your faith or my faith to see each other again. And come closer. I'll not come again and again. Let me embrace you and cry my heart out. This beautiful Geet tonight. Hum ko mili hai aaj ye ghadiya naseeb se ji bhar ke dekh le ji ye hum ko kareeb se dilaap ke नसीब में ये बात हो न हो
for the sake of our friendship. May we never break our bond of friendship till my last breath is... You all do this very well, sing along with me, come on. Yeah! 